Two things are destroying America, record homelessness and record rents, but nobody in charge seems to be doing anything about it. Why is that? According to new federal data, a record number of people are now unhoused, more than 653,000, a 12% population increase. Over 8 million Americans are behind on rent, and 2.3 million experienced a rent increase of more than $500. And so when you talk to actual people and you ask them why they're so angry about the economy, they're angry because prices are so, so much higher than they used to be. This job market is like the craziest that I have ever seen. 55% of unemployed adults said they were burnt out from searching for a new job. If I did not sign a lease, then it would be a $600 increase. How did that feel? I, I panicked. I absolutely panicked thinking I'm going to have to move now. A growing national problem that could take decades to fix. So a record number of Americans are homeless while rents are surging. And in New York City this past year, rents hit $5,600 a month. And even in formerly affordable parts of the country, Arizona, Ohio, Texas, Tennessee, rents are skyrocketing in these places as well, which is terrible news for the middle class. But this has been a trend since 2020 in America, and nobody in the country seems to be taking serious action about it, which almost makes it seem like it's happening on purpose. Right now, half of Americans spend between 30 and 50% of their income on rent and right now it's harder than ever for people to afford things like gas groceries repairs insurance and a sudden medical expense could spell disaster for someone's finances but in order to uncover why it seems like america's allowing its middle class to be destroyed you've got to understand that nobody's talking about the real reasons why this is actually happening and once you know what those are this will all make sense even if it's a bit alarming <laughs> According to new federal data, a record number of people are now unhoused, more than 653,000, a 12% population increase since last year. Those are some scary stats, and that is a massive year-over-year -year increase. And you've got several reasons for rising homelessness in America. Rising rents, rising addictions, rising mental health issues. Plus, the United States is in the middle of an asylum crisis, and that's causing the shelter populations of big cities like New York to explode in size. And according to the Coalition for the Homeless, the New York City shelter population has around 123,000 people in it, 67,000 of whom are here seeking asylum. But as you'll soon see, that still leaves about 60,000 individuals who are in the shelters because of unfortunate outcomes. And those outcomes are being exacerbated by surging rents, not just in New York, but across the entire country. In fact, rents are a crucial component of the homelessness epidemic because if people can't afford a place to live, they're going to wind up on the streets. Eastern Washington state is emblematic of a housing problem sweeping the country. Many say the rent is too high and experts say it's in part due to the high cost of buying a home a lot of those people considering buying that first home uh, are kind of pressing pause on that search but they turn around and find that their rent has also increased really substantially so it's not just new york city with out of control rents the entire country even eastern washington places that used to be affordable options for folks are just not there anymore everybody's getting priced out do you rent or do you own here i rent you rent did it go up yeah. That sucks. Not to mention, I have to move out at the end of the month. Really? Yeah. And there's two problems with this. First, if people can't buy a home and enter the housing market because prices are too high, what do they do? They rent. But since everybody's renting, that also jacks up the prices of renting an apartment. And every part of the country is just plagued with housing shortages. We just aren't building enough affordable housing in America for everybody to have a place to live. And you essentially have a situation where everybody's competing for the exact same thing. And there's no sign that that's going to change anytime soon. Nationally, rent is more than 20% higher than the start of 2020, according to Redfin. Over 8 million Americans are behind on rent, and 2.3 million experienced a rent increase of more than $500 in the last 12 months. And look at this, in New York City, evictions are going through the roof. It's very sad, because if you can't pay your rent, you'll end up on the streets. And according to the latest data, 2.3 million Americans have experienced a rent increase of $500 or more in the last 12 months. And as you can imagine, this is putting an incredible strain on the finances of individuals and families, especially when you consider that fewer than half of Americans can afford a $1,000 emergency if it were to happen right now. And now the rent's gone up. What are people supposed to do? How are they gonna afford anything? This is 
terrible. And some people say this is being allowed to happen. If I did not sign a lease, then it would be a $600 increase. So I signed a six month lease so that it was a $400 increase. Spokane is a boom town with amongst the worst housing inventory levels in the nation. So because of the rent crisis and the housing crisis, a lot of families are finding themselves in seemingly unwinnable situations. And yes, going month to month does give you the flexibility to move when you want, which in a tough economy might be a good option to have at the table. But since it's too expensive, it could bankrupt you. And the long-term option, since that's also too expensive, that could also bankrupt you, just not as quickly. It's like in this country, you're screwed whether you sign or not. And of course, it seems like greedy landlords are the only ones winning in a situation like this. But is that really true? Our mom and pop landlords might not make it. And we're the ones that supply most of the low-income housing. Insurance is going up. Utilities are going up every single year. And so this is how I earn a living. This is how I feed my family. Without a regular paycheck, I need to know that my rent and my mortgage is covered. So as a renter myself, the only thing I think about when I get a lease renewal and the rent goes up is that it went up. And I never for a second consider the fact that the landlord might have no other choice but to raise it. And it's not like landlords are universally wealthy. Some are also decidedly middle class. For example, in New York, this place right here, it's worth millions of dollars. But the landlord, he's got to pay for heat. He's got to pay hot water. He's got to pay a whole bunch of utilities for all the people that live in the building and his property taxes are probably insane because this tiny little building's in the center of Manhattan. It's worth millions. 18 total apartments in the building. Whoever owns this has to pay to heat 18 apartments in the New York City winter every single year. And right now fuel costs are up. So what do you think happens? It costs more to heat every apartment and now all of the rents have to go up to compensate. The landlord can't eat every cost forever without it putting them in a bad financial situation. And oftentimes, a property like this can be the sole source of income for a family. Does that mean we should feel bad for landlords who charge way too much money for no reason? No, it doesn't. But it does mean that there might be legitimate reasons for doing so that nobody can avoid. But there's actually a second issue that's making it even harder for people to pay their rent, and experts say it's not going away anytime soon either. So here we are at a grocery store, and this is where the cost of living squeeze is inescapable, no matter what your living situation is. A cart of groceries today costs way more than it used to, and for America's middle class, that is a big problem. So when you talk to actual people, they're angry because prices are so, so much higher than they used to be. Grocery prices are up 25%, and there's not really many parts of the household. So not only is the rent up, Grocery prices, those are also up. And if your food costs more, guess what? Now you've got less money for rent, which brings us back to the issue of rising homelessness. This contributes to that problem. But the reason rising grocery store prices are such a problem is because most households operate on some sort of budget. And what that means is if the cost of the things that you're buying has gone up, you've got to rearrange the other parts of your life to even out the difference. And you know when you're playing Tetris and you just keep getting the wrong pieces and there's no way to make them all work? That's the predicament that a lot of families are in right now. Everything's going up and making it all fit together very difficult. But it's not just outrageous food prices that are hurting the middle class. Pretty much every automobile expense has gone up. Insurance is through the roof. My policy went way up, almost 30%. And that's with no accidents or tickets. And it doesn't help that things like congestion pricing will soon tax every single car on the road in New York. And although New York's the first state to institute congestion pricing, it's definitely not going to be the last, that's for sure. And let's say you want to go out and do something. Like maybe you want to go to a restaurant. Maybe you want to have a night out on the town. Well, everything that you're doing is now also going to cost more because the same costs that have gone up for you and me and our personal lives, those are going up for the restaurant owners, for the movie theaters, tennis lessons, everything's more expensive. And there's literally no area of the country, no industry that's getting by without any of this affecting them. And it's just layer and layer and layer of financial pressure on people who are already at their breaking point. I mean, we're talking about 10 years worth of wage growth that we also saw over these last few years. The, the problem is that you know, inflation has eroded much of those gains. In fact, since 2020, real gains in America are up less than 1%, which means at best, your job is keeping pace with inflation. Worst case, inflation is outpacing your income. And not only are prices higher when you try to spend your own money, if you need to borrow money for something like mortgage or a loan for your business, the cost to borrow that money, that's also much higher. In fact, right now is actually the worst time to go into credit card debt or to not be making more than your minimum payments because those rates are just through the roof and people are getting caught 
caught by surprise. And this is another crisis that's not getting as much attention as it probably needs. But this is America, and what do Americans do when they're down on their luck or when they don't have enough money? They work hard and try to improve their lives. But sadly, now that too is no longer an option for most people. paper, the job market now looks solid, and U.S. employers added 2.7 million people to the payroll in 2023 alone. It seems to suggest that the labor market has been fairly strong and, in fact, surprisingly resilient, especially after 2023, where we had... So, on paper, the job market seems solid. We've got record low unemployment, which should be a good thing. It should mean that everybody who wants a job can have one, and it should mean that everybody who's not happy with the job they have can upgrade, but that's not what people are finding. In fact, employment right now, 3.4%, that is a 54 year low. But the numbers, they tell a story that most people don't experience. Recently, unemployed full-time workers applied to an average of 30 jobs, only to receive an average of four callbacks or responses. If you look at the job- That's crazy, 30 jobs for four callbacks. And those callbacks might not even be for the job the person making the applications even prefers. And look at this, according to the internet, which is never wrong about anything, people are applying for hundreds, maybe even thousands of jobs and getting no response. This person says they have a computer science degree. Now, some people speculate the jobs that are applying for might actually be fake, the listings might be old, or it could be that certain popular positions get all the applicants while others don't. In New York at the state level, there are 10,000 open positions that the government is unable to fill, but they're all entry level positions and I don't think they're getting enough applicants. Also, applicants are reporting the worst luck with positions that are remote only, or they feel that looking for a remote only position is hurting their chances. It also doesn't help when jobs that are readily available, like being a police officer in New York City, are so dangerous that even though they're lowering their hiring standards and waiving things like the police exam fee, people just aren't interested in signing up. But right now, 55% of adults are experiencing burnout from the job search, and what that leads to is people spending more time in jobs that are not a good fit for them, and that could mean that life stays harder for more people for longer, but the other problem is what many people are referring to as the tedious application process. Look at these headlines. Apparently, employers care about what you think about Taylor Swift, who's running these companies. But not only is the process for getting a job arduous and time-consuming, apparently applying for a job from a job board means you've only got a 3% chance of actually winding up with suitable employment. And that forces applicants to over-apply for positions in hopes of getting something. And then when people do get a call back, it might be for something they're no longer interested in, or worse, it could be for something that they applied for out of desperation because there aren't any other good options. A 2023 study from Glassdoor revealed that mentions of applicants being ghosted by their prospective employers grew substantially. We often hear from job I feel like the most depressing thing about this part of the story is that you're trying to make your life better and it doesn't seem like the people who could help you do it are willing to. But hiring is also incredibly difficult for companies. And because of the internet, one job Job posting can be seen by thousands of people and hiring managers everywhere are completely overwhelmed and if you put up a job there's just an endless sea of inquiries and the other problem is that companies they're not letting people go as often as they used to so there's very little turnover they have enough people now some companies will say that they have a worker shortage but studies show firms are hiring less often and have less turnover amongst their current employees and that's because a lot of companies are still feeling the pinch from labor shortages of just a couple of years ago in fact in the tech world many companies ended up overhiring, and now they're going through a series of mass layoffs that are affecting the entire country. And as it turns out, more companies than ever are very cautious about hiring somebody to then only have them let go. They'd rather hold on to people for longer. Which means less and less job offers are extended to those who apply. But what many people want to know is, why is this happening? Is it intentional? Is it someone's fault? Is America really trying to eliminate its middle class? Is, is it ever going to help the middle class at some point? Those are big questions. So the scariest thing about all of this is that to a degree, it's intentional. If you remember, just a couple of years ago, there was massive, massive inflation. And if you remember, store shelves were empty, popular products were sold out, it was hard to buy cars, pretty much every available home got snapped up, and the government decided that an overheating economy was bad news for the country. And there's one thing the government can do to slow down an economy, and that is to tighten interest rates. And since America runs on borrowed money, making it harder to borrow money, a 
affects every single area of our lives. We're talking everything from construction projects to how much speculative hiring a company is willing to do, even to the amount of interest you're paying on your credit card. That's why those rates have gone up because the rate to borrow money has gone up. Mortgage rates are through the roof, so the dream of home ownership is disappearing. And this sure makes it seem like the American dream is walking away from everybody and that it might now be out of reach for most Americans. And the scariest thing about this is that the decisions that led to the economy going too hard and now going too soft, those aren't decisions that you or I can make. We just react to those things and we're trapped in whatever the policy result is. But if the past is any indication of the future, these difficult economic times won't last forever. But how long things stay the way they are, that's really up to the Federal Reserve. When they decide to change rates, things that happen in our day-to-day -day lives, those are going to change too. And for many Americans, the fact that this is an election year makes what happens next very important. And when I look at the city and consider just how much times have changed over the last year or so, it just makes me think these problems, they're so much deeper deeper than the obvious. So what do you think? What do you think the right thing to do is to fix the country and actually help America's middle class in a meaningful way? Let me know. I really appreciate you watching. I will see you in the next video.